Hello, this is behind the camera, Faith at House Broad Homestead, and my petite menagerie over here. This is Pepper, and I'm out here with the girls. Um, I am on here today facing the wrong way with some scenic livestock footage to give you guys a little bit of an update on uh, what's going on around here since I haven't had time to make a video otherwise. Um, we are having some interesting livestock issues that have um, occupied a fair bit of time and um, creative attention and troubleshooting and I figured I would just kind of go over them here in case um, they're helpful to anyone else or uh, we can get some uh, help from you guys. So first off, yes hi, hi sweetie. First things first, um, here I'll come down here where it's a little bit more scenic for you guys. Um, this is Aunt Spiker over here, and that other Easter egg or the brown one over there is Aunt Sponge. They are both at point of lay. They are doing the submission squats, um, and Sponge, about a month ago, started laying and was laying pretty prolifically for her age and for her size for about um, two-ish weeks and then just stopped. And the others have not ostensibly started. Um, they're all the same age. They're all 22 weeks. Um, but we're just kind of baffled because um, at least these two girls should be ready to go and hot to trot. And uh, we're racking our brains for um, where the damn eggs are. <laughs> um, our theory was that they were in this wood pile over here, if not in nest boxes. But we've turned it upside down. Um, haven't found anything. We do an Easter egg hunt in the yard almost every day and have yet to find anything outside the nest boxes. And she was laying in the nest box to start. So we're trying to think what could be causing this. Um, one theory I had was that we weren't feeding them enough. So I've upped their feed, haven't noticed anything yet, but that's only been about a week that we've been doing that. Um, the other possibility was that we changed their bedding. That could also be a factor. We, um, I think I'm kneeling in chicken shit. One sec. That is absolutely what I'm doing. Um, we changed their bedding. They had been getting um, hemp bedding, which was lovely, but our supplier was um, on vacation and I had a bit of a gap. So I put down some old pine shavings from um, leftover from when they had a brooder and that did seem to coincide with when they stopped laying. So I guess that's a possibility. We do have more hemp bedding now. I'll put some more in, see if that makes a difference. The other possibility is um, there were a series of wasp nests that were getting built in the coop and we kept knocking them down. I finally prevented them from rebuilding with a simple little trick I'll make a video on separately. But basically, I wadded up some um, paper bags Hi. I wadded up some paper bags into little crumples, put a little bit of essential oil on them, and stapled them up in the coop. I put one in the nest box lids and one in the coop itself, and that did succeed in uh, keeping any more wasp from rebuilding nests. Um, but I'm wondering if the essential oils or the um, what looks like a wasp nest in their coop put them off. That's my other theory. Um, they look really healthy. They free range all day, so there's no shortage of sunlight or nutrition or activity. They don't act stressed out. The only time they've acted stressed is when um, we didn't observe what exactly happened, but they got too close to her on the wrong occasion when she had a bug up her butt, and um, she um, bit one of their tail feathers out. They've acted okay around her since then. They like following her around and getting bugs from where she roots. Um, but I could see that being somewhat of a predator situation. So those are all factors I'm trying to rule out um, somewhat systematically. I mean, there's been flies. I don't think flies will put them off lay. Some of them are definitely not ready to go yet. Um, the Morans are not sexually mature for some time now. We might not even get eggs from them this year. But I'm hoping we can turn this around before winter so their um, the um, ROI on these guys is more than just cuteness and manure soon. Um, you can see, um, incidentally, that uh, Pepper is helping us to tear up this horrible life um, 
uh, landscape fabric, so good job. But yeah, that brings me to her. Um, so the story with Miss Pepper here, let me see if I can get a good face shot of her. Hi, baby. Hi. You have an adoring fan base. What do you think? Yeah. Um, she came to us, um, a couple months ago. She was about six months old at the time, and we had a, um, Facebook friend message us and say, Hey, would you like a pig for your farm? She's not getting enough attention in our house. And we said, okay, you know, we did some research and thought, yeah, I think we can handle this. Um, you know, my husband had had many pigs growing up and really enjoyed them. Um, we have enough space for her. We thought we could do a pretty good job. And we'd been pretty discouraged for a couple months with her because she was intermittently completely ungovernable. And so we think, you know, what are we doing wrong? What about our circumstances is wrong? Is this not a good fit? And then the last couple days, two to three days over the weekend, she was just a completely different animal. She was, um, usually she'll squeal to come inside when it's raining. Yes, Coco Vaughn. Yes, we hear you. That's the Moran. We think he's a rooster. Um, so we were, she, she would squeal to come in from the rain and you know, we were used to that. Um, but over the weekend she was squealing to come in all day with no rain. And um, when she did come in, she was jumping on the cats. She was um, just kind of being a menace, quite frankly. Um, and there was like no place where we could coexist harmoniously in the household. So she just squealed all day for no discernible reason. Um, she was jumping on us, she was biting at us. Um, and I'm like, this is, this doesn't seem right. I, I'm starting to wonder if she's spayed. So I followed up with um, her previous set of owners and um, like, hey, do we have some contact info for someone who might have vet records? Went back to the folks that they got her from and come to find out that um, she was foisted on them by, so it's like this Jerry Springer family dynamic for this poor pig. Um, we are at least her fourth home, if not more. Um, we have no idea who bred her. We have no idea who, um, if she got spayed at all. Um, I think the previous sets of owners were going off the fact that she has a line on her tummy, which means nothing. And I, I can't fault them because we, you know, made the same mistake. We took someone's word at face value and didn't explore much further. But the fact of the matter remains that she's acting very much like she has a heat cycle. So that is problematic because um, mini pigs with heat cycles do not make good pets. Um, so even if she were not a good fit, um, no one's going to take her unless she's fixed. So now we're trying to figure out how to get a mini pig who is 60-ish pounds at this point and much older and bigger than the recommended spay age spayed. Because, um, you know, my, my husband's in between jobs right now. It's money's kind of tight. And um, it's just it's turned into this sort of like rescue scenario where we want the, the buck of... Um, not taking adequate care of her to stop with us, but we're trying to figure out how to make that happen for her. That's a quite a view, sweetie. We're gonna have to censor bar you. Um, so it's looking like if anyone can spay her, it's going to be a um, veterinary school up in Fort Collins, which is three hours away from us. Um, and that would be costly. That would be, um, quite a day trip just for a consult um so it's kind of kind of like like the livestock mayo clinic for our state um and we're trying to figure out if anyone can do it closer but at this point it's kind of non-negotiable um not an expense we were planning on but um again this goes back to the video i made about values we value animal quality of life more highly than fitting perfectly in a budget this is the kind of thing that's um to make sure that she can have a good home here or elsewhere, I would put on a credit card and just figure it out. We might, um, depending on how bad it is, set up a GoFundMe and try and like bridge some of the difference just so that we can make this happen for her. 
Um, cause we, we'd like to, we'd like to keep her here. We'd like her to have a, you know, she's, she's thriving as much as a, um, you know, passed off piggy can thrive. Um, just we've got to make sure the other animals thrive too and that she's not biting tails. Um, things like that. So that is the state of the livestock. Um, they're, when they're sweet, they're sweet. Um, Miss Spiker over there is my buddy. She'll let me pick her up and hold her. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, never work with kids and animals, man. Um, that's kind of where we are with everything. Um, cats are doing well. Um, I, I guess this qualifies as a livestock too. We're looking into fish for our ponds in the dome. I will, I swear to God, make that dome video at some point. Um, there's just an ongoing, I keep waiting until there's a state of doneness with it, and I don't think it's going to get there. Um, so at some point I'll just do a state of affairs video in there, but basically we wanted to get fish in our little above ground um, heat sink pond in there. It's like um, 1200 gallon just above ground tank with some aquatic plants in there, and um, there was a scare with the dome company that um, their new um, PVC supplier for the pond liner was not actually a fish safe PVC supplier. Um, it's looking like we were not in that affected group, but I'm still kind of troubleshooting to make sure that the water is safe because I don't want to... I, I know people think of fish as disposable in some cases. I'm really trying to give them their best chance before I purchase a life form and throw it in there to die. So. Um, I'm running some tests on, you know, phosphorus, not phosphorus, um, phosphates and, um, nitrates and ammonia and things like that. Did a little bit of amendments. We'll see how that goes. I'm hoping to get some fish in there soon, but, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm paranoid now about bringing on another life form when these ones are not totally under control. But yeah, that's, that's kind of what's going on right now. That's what's occupying my time and attention and, um, for everyone who's commented and um, engaged with the content and subscribed in the interim, thank you so much. It's very encouraging. Um, I look forward to putting out new content soon. Um, in the meantime, thank you for your patience with um, with everything. And hopefully there will be some eggs and um, piggies who are no longer looking for a porking to um, report on next time. So have a good one. Uh, thanks. Bye.